Hey. There's Am Pete. I here now? You are. Oh, thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. All right. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Not a problem. I actually think if you're ready, uh, Mr. Chair, I think we're ready to begin the meeting. Okay. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, May 28th. 2020 regular meeting of the Planning Commission. This uh, meeting is by teleconference only. Um, Mr. Secretary, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Pickett? Here. Commissioner Strongman? Here. Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Ward? Here. Commissioner Reiser? Here. Vice Chair Kerselik? Here. And Chair Lezak? Here. We have all seven members present may conduct business. Uh, okay, next on the agenda is the consent calendar. I do not see any items on the consent calendar. Uh, Mr. Secretary, is there any uh, items for the consent calendar this evening? There are no items on the consent calendar this evening. All right, hearing that there are none, we'll move forward into the public communications portion of the agenda. And Mr. Chair, I would just like to offer that we should notice um, that this meeting is being brought to you pursuant to the governor's executive order, if you'd care to read that into the record. Oh, yes. This portion of the meeting is reserved. Um, excuse me. Um, as stated earlier, this meeting is by teleconference only. This meeting is to be conducted pursuant to the provisions of the governor's executive order, which suspends certain requirements of the Ralph M. Brown Act. Teleconference locations are not open to the public. Uh, to provide a live remote public comment, please join the Zoom teleconference meeting. The meeting ID and password are... Meeting ID is... Yes, I, ha I have the number. Sorry. 911. 389-73626. And the login password is 603-879. When the chair opens the public comment period, please use the raise hand feature, which will alert staff and commissioners that you have a public comment that you would like to provide. And please wait your turn and once brought into the meeting, state your name for the record and you'll have three minutes to make your remarks. Uh, Mr. Secretary, are there any members of the public who would wish to make public comment at this time? I do not believe there are, but let me double check with my colleagues one moment. No, Mr. Chair, there are no members of the public wishing to make comment at this time during public communication. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we'll close the public communications portion of the meeting and move forward with the public hearings item on the agenda. Um, we'll go ahead and hear the first item on public hearings, which is the Union 76 gas station renovation conditional use permit and design review application number Y17-097. Um, do we have a staff report from the? We, we do. Thank you, Chair and the Commission. My name is Chip Griffin. I'm a senior planner with the City of Walnut Creek Planning Division, and I am going to share my screen now. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could ask a point of clarification just before we begin the item, if there were any ex parte communications that any member of the commission wishes to divulge at this time before Chip begins the item. Uh, hearing none, I'll take that as there are no, no uh, communications to share. Thank you. And let me get this displayed correctly. Does that look right to everybody? It does. Not at the top. 
Okay, there we go. I'm uh, like I said, my name is Chip Griffin. I'm a senior planner. I'm here tonight to present to the Planning Commission Union 76 Circle K CUP application number Y17-097. <clears throat> Um, little housekeeping, the uh, applicant, Mutana Ibrahim, is here with his team tonight. They do not have a presentation. They will be available to answer questions. Moving on, the site um, for the uh, project is at 2501 North Main Street. It's at the corner of North Main here and San Luis Road here. Right here is an on-ramp in an off ramp to I, uh, freeway six, 680 freeway. Um, it's zoned service commercial. If we can move into some photos here. The gas station was established in the mid late 1950s. It was remodeled in 1983. It's considered an existing legal non conforming use um, in, in 19. In the 50s or in 1983, um, it's, I, I believe that, that the service station was uh, used by Wright and did not need the benefit of a conditional use permit, but it does now. Um, so it's an existing legal non-conforming use. It's subject to a use permit in service stations and or convenience markets. There are convenience markets with gasoline sales are subject to Supplemental development standards, which we're going to talk, which we're really going to focus on tonight. The uh, um, planning commission will be asked to make some exceptions to those standards. Uh, this aerial shows the existing condition. Again, you can see North Main here. This is public storage. This is the uh, 680 um, off ramp right there, and then San Luis Road. Uh, here you can see. Now, let's take a look at this property. This um, this uh, blue shadow over the top does not really depict the real property. This lane, can you guys see my, my pointer? No, unfortunately we cannot see your pointer. Oh, you can't, okay. Um, so on the west side of the property is general plumbing and it shows a blue line running down that, running down that driveway. That is not correct. The, 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 the property line runs right along the edge of the buildings. It does not include any of that, any of that roadway or easement, and neither does it include any of the right of way on San Luis Road. So it should it should turn right on the inside of the sidewalk along San Luis. Just, just a little clean up there. And a closer look, you can see the the site current. This is the current site. You can see um, it's got access points on North Main, southbound North Main, and on eastbound San Luis Road. There is a canopy with four fueling stations, or four dispenses with eight fueling stations. Um, there's parking towards the north side. There is a small, say, kiosk, which is, um, which is a stand-up service, so you can't go in there. Uh, and there's some other outbuildings along the west side and then you can, so if you follow down a little bit more, you can see a couple of parking spaces. And then down in the southwest corner, you can see the uh, air and water station. Um, a lot of the landscaping will generally remain in the same areas. And that kind of becomes important when we talk about the supplemental development regulations. The project includes uh, construction. Well, the project begins with demolition of the site, including all structures and the fuel tanks. The project would 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 construct a 997 foot snack shop, three new pump islands. There's four now. They're going to replace it with three, which would have six fueling stations as opposed to eight. If we go back to this. You can see how the fueling stations are the fuel the the fuel emplacements are in an east-west direction. The um, proposed is in a kind of a north-south direction. So they're gonna lose one pump and two fueling stations in order to build the snack shop. The um, site work will have two spaces, which is a required parking. Actually, there's three spaces, but they're only required to have two. It'll include a new canopy 
And you can see that rectangular structure in the middle, or the, the coverage in the middle, includes new landscape. Those two are asterisks because those are the two items that you're going to be asked to make exceptions for. Uh, project also includes site lighting, a trash enclosure, and new underground storage tanks. The required entitlements for this project include use permits, really. Um, the service station and the service commercial zone requires this uh, additional use permit. And any service station or, or a convenience market with gasoline sales is subject to the supplemental development standards. And those are uh, the section that's cited here. Um, and there are exceptions sought for those. It also requires a conditional use permit for the concurrent sales of alcoholic beverages and gasoline, uh, and also requires a use permit for the continuation of a non-conforming use. Um, back to concurrent sales, the, um, there's, the, it requires the standard findings plus four additional criteria for the, for the Planning Commission to factor. They are not findings. Um, the non-conforming use, however, does require four special findings. Um, these, this project went to the Design Review Commission for a study session in March of this year, and they have made um, positive recommendations on the use permit, as well as the, um, the, uh, the exceptions sought from the development, development standards, and which, is, which is a requirement. Um, let's look at these things. I know it's a terrible slide, but it is what it is. Um, supplemental development regulations. The ones that are bolded are are the are the standard are the regulations that are being um, that, that exceptions for these standards are being sought. And B is a minimum of fifteen percent of the site shall be landscaped. And B two includes a street frontage landscape shall have a minimum of seven feet in width. That's, that's deep from the, from the sidewalk with berming up to, uh, with no less than two feet height. Also, um, D, regulation D, no more than 18% of the site shall be covered by a canopy. And when I practiced this, I wanted to go to H first by stating that the Planning Commission, upon recommend, recommendation by the Design Review Commission, may permit exceptions to the landscaping, maximum street frontage to voter curb cuts, and lastly, maximum canopy coverage. So you do have the you do have the authority to grant these exceptions, and they were recommended. Each each of these sought were recommended by the Planning uh, Commission. Let's let's take a closer look at at the exceptions being sought. The landscaping, a minimum of fifteen percent of the site is required. The project includes twelve percent of the site. The frontage landscaping shown kind of pointed out here. Um, requires seven feet uh, depth from, say, the back of sidewalk to the to the um, deck of the of the station. It, it in in this case, it's it's more like a seven foot maximum. This is a pretty tight site, so they did. We we've been working with them for quite a long time to get to get this landscaping in there um, to the extent that. The site can still be used by customers and served by both trash trucks, which would come in this way, and fueling trucks, which would make this sweep here to get to these new underground storage tanks that you can see. Um, I, again, I'm thinking you can see my cursor, but you can't. Uh, the, the, the trucks would come off of North Main and go right underneath the canopy next to that, that sliver-like landscape area right at the intersection. So the um, that is why that is why the landscape areas do not make the set Also, the canopy coverage uh, right here um, covers 19 percent. It's a small percent over, and and here's why. Um, the um, Contra Costa Clean Water Act requires on uh, on mandate from the state water region. State Regional Water Quality Board requires 10 feet of um, 10 feet of clearance be, be between the face of the fueling dispenser and the drip line of the canopy. And when you run that all around the, the, 
fueling dispensers, this is what you get. This is as small as you can get and still be compliant with C3 standards. And that's, uh, and for those reasons, staff and the design review commission, and of course it being a, a small site, uh, would support these exceptions. Now, concurrent sales of alcoholic beverages, these are the three, or I'm sorry, the four factors that the planning commission may weigh when determining um, the, determining uh, granting the, this conditional use permit. Uh, the staff report points out that that there's that this site has been a gas station since the 50s. Um, it's been remodeled. They've, they've, they've been in business for that long. Um, never had really any issues there. The police department has been um, uh, consulted twice on this, and they have no they have no record of any issues, and they don't anticipate any issues with the sale of alcoholic beverages. That's somewhat based, and that's that's not only this site; it's kind of citywide because of the, the just the just the type of use. It's a swing in go to the store, pick up what you need, take off. There are rules in effect that tries to, with the intent to not sell a um, alcoholic beverage by the checkout stand, you know, in a, single, in a singular fashion, that's on ice. Uh, those kinds of things are conditioned to not occur um, with this CEP. So with that, staff recommends uh, uh, or supports the concurrent sales of alcohol and beverages against that. Um, the applicant also has submitted a, a training program, which includes franchisee training, new employee training, it participates in the BARS program. Generally, if, if you're not familiar with the BARS program, that's, that's I think they're, they're, they're the biggest or the, the most common thing they do is they send people in there to underage to try to try to purchase alcoholic beverages. Um, so it's a, it's a test. And also the site will be recorded or surveyed, surveyed, surveilled 24 seven and it's recorded. Um, continuation of a non-conforming use. The planning commission must make these four findings. Again, these findings are made in the, the um, are analyzed in the staff report and they're written out, documented in the draft resolution. Um, and, and again, it's kind of for the same reason. This, it's been a gas station. It's, it's, it's held up well. It's kind of, it's kind of worn out. Um, uh, it, could, it could use a remodeling. Um, and this is a pretty major remodel. Uh, I've thrown in an elevation of the Circle K store. Um, this is being actually developed a little bit more since the study session. So it'll, it'll look a little bit uh, different than that. Um, and the uh, staff supports the commission's um, in finding a non-conforming use, use plan. With that, staff would move or recommend the planning commission move to approve the, the resolution um, approving conditional use permit for application Y17097. And um, the, the uh, requested exceptions to the supplementary development regulations and to allow the concurrent sales of alcohol and beverages in the continuance of a non-conforming use. Um, are there any questions of staff? Uh, I've got a few questions, if I might, Mr. Chair. Okay, should I keep, sure should I keep this up? Uh, no. I don't, I don't know. Go ahead. I'll ask the questions. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the uh, design review suggested, hinted at, or something that the applicant consider eliminating one of the parking spaces since they're only required to have two and they're, they're showing three and substitute the land, substitute or add landscaping to the parking space that was removed. So the application use permit that's before us shows three. Um, if we approve it with three, then that pretty much precludes DRC from taking that parking space away from them. So what would you suggest in terms of handling that issue? 
I would, I would, the, the, the exception doesn't necessarily mean that they couldn't landscape that area. I think they're going to revisit that, but if it, but if by chance that does not work out well for, for one reason or another, they, they would have this exception. So we could require, we could require at this approval level that they do eliminate one parking space, replace it with landscape, and hand it back to DRC with that condition on it. Correct. Um, you you could. I, I I think the math might still work out where it needs an exception. I, I I worked it out. I think it does still need an exception. So either way, it needs an exception. Right. But it would add 150 or 160 square feet of landscaping on that uh, what southwest corner. Uh, now, it may not work there because that's where their air pumps are, air and water pumps are, too. So they may not be able to functionally do that. I just want to throw that out there. That was a DRC comment, and it would be appropriate for the Planning Commission to deal with that one way or the other. So the DRC has clear direction when it comes to them. They can ask for it, but if we don't require it, the applicant then is in the driver's seat in terms of uh, you know, responding to that. And it still does need an exception. So I'm just throwing that out for other commissioners to weigh in on as far as their opinion of three parking spaces versus the landscaping. If this were a convenience store, which it's only like three feet away from being a convenience store, they would have to have four parking spaces. So by keeping it under a thousand feet, they only need two. They're giving us three, which is a compromise. So I'm not saying I know the best way to split this up, but I think those are things that the commission might want to at least comment on and see if you know it's okay the way it's proposed or if we want more landscaping uh, at the sacrifice of parking. I don't think this is a you know hard, difficult parking zone out in this area. So parking doesn't bother me. Landscaping is, is important. So I just want to throw that out there for discussion. Um, and then um, let's see. So, and the land, the uh, yeah, the landscaping is twenty percent deficient. It's not three percent. It's twenty percent because the fire depth fifteen. They're giving us twelve. The requirement to what they're giving us is a twenty percent deviation. So, we should take that into consideration. And my last editorial comment: I don't think there's anything we can do about uh, an alcohol permit at a gas station, is there? Unless we make one of the findings about schools and churches and things. Did you get that chip? That's my daughter's iPad. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let me ask the question again. Are, are we required to approve an alcohol sales permit at a gas station because of the way the state law is written? Unless, yes. we make one, unless we make one of the findings that are listed in the in the staff report. Yeah, I think I it was it was it was 1995, I'm, I think that uh, the, and I, I I believe I attached the uh, public resources code. Right. Yeah. And when I think this, this, I think what happened was the city turned around and, and adopted their own. Right. Right. Okay, I get it. Oh, so, yeah. For the time being and for the last 30 years, we've had to live with alcohol sales at gas stations, which doesn't make any sense to me, but that's what we have. Um, okay, so it's just the landscaping versus parking that I would throw out for discussion, and um, I'm not strongly swayed either way, but it was a comment that Design Review made, and we should, you know, I think give them firm direction. That's my questions. Okay, hey, well, that was an excellent comment. Thank you, Commissioner Pickett. Does uh, Commissioner Anderson? Yeah, on the same topic, um, Chip, if we uh, put additional landscaping where the, uh, the northwest corner took out that parking space, I'm not sure if that was the one Bob was suggesting, but if we took out that parking space, it's a handicapped space, um, would that handicapped space then need to be relocated to the southwest corner? And, and can we do that? Is that a, can that be configured to uh, handle a handicapped space? 
the I might I might I might ask the engineer to respond to that, but I believe that there is a path of travel issue with that. And and also I think that if it have one space, it needs to be a van accessible space. So if we were to take that one space and put landscaping in, it would more likely be the one in the southwest corner. I'm I'm sorry, I I can't hear you. Sorry, if if we were to take out one space to put landscaping in. It would most likely be the, the one at the southwest corner. Yes, likely the one on the the north, uh, the, the northerly one of those two. Okay. There's a um, air water fueling uh, air water station right there at the bottom corner. Um, it's been there. They've never really had issues with it, so they just want to preserve that space. Um, you know, and landscaping. If you if you want to look at landscaping, it could be all or a portion of that parking space. And just one other question: um, the, uh, the little shopping center to the north um, has a driveway that exits uh, past this property, um, where you've indicated the the property line is. That driveway would would remain as an exit from that shopping center. Would the pro would the property line remain? And then, will the driveway, um, the the drive that, that takes the exit traffic from that little shopping center? Yes, there the, that driveway and this service station are are mutually exclusive. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioner comments at this point or questions, or shall we move forward with the? Uh, the public comment, public uh, and comment from the uh, applicants team before we take on any more conversation on this issue. And, and the applicant is here for, for to answer questions, um, unless he has anything to add, but I, I haven't heard otherwise. So, so seeing no other commissioner raise their hand at this point, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the public comment section, move to the applicant and the applicants team. I understand they don't have a present formal presentation for us, but if the applicant would be interested in introducing themselves and perhaps um, offering up some additional information from themselves or their team to try to address the questions before us. Uh, and if not, we can ask some questions of the applicant. If, the, uh, if I could observe if the applicant could please turn on his video. Should I should I end the slideshow? We ended your slideshow for you, Chip. Thank you. Um, but if the applicant, Mr. Ibrahim, could please um, unmute and engage the video so we could see or hear from you, please. Mute. Do you hear me? Hello? Yes, thank you. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, good evening. Uh, my my name is Muthan Ibrahim. I'm uh, with MY Architects Inc. I'm the architect for the project. Uh, I would like to thank uh, staff for presenting the project tonight. Uh, on behalf of the property owner, uh, we're very excited uh, to move forward with reconstructing this gas station. Uh, we've been working with planning uh, on this project for approximately three years. And, uh, you know, the property is very small. Uh, it's a challenging design, but we think we came up with a good solution uh, to remodel this gas station. Um, and, uh, you know, I heard the questions uh, regarding the accessible parking stall relocation to the uh, southwest corner uh, by the driveway. I don't think that's possible because we are required to provide a van accessible and the, uh, the California Building Code required the van accessible to be as close as possible to the convenience store. Uh, as far as increasing the landscape and substituting it with uh, uh, with the uh, with the one of the parking stalls, we what we can do is we can extend uh, the planter on uh, uh, San Luis, eliminating the parking stall currently for the air water station and move that air water station closer to the trash enclosure. Um, I think this will work for us. Uh, let's see here. Um, and I am here to answer any question you might have. The owner of the property is uh, 
uh, on this call too. Okay, uh, any commissioner have any questions or comments they'd like to share or discuss with the applicant, applicant's team? Uh, Commissioner Ward. Um, so if you move the um, air and water station and extend the landscaping, does that get you, how, how much does that get us in terms of additional landscaping? And uh, <clears throat> well, the stall currently, the parallel stall is 22 by eight, eight and a half. What is that? Uh, probably what, 250 square feet or something? I don't have a calculator yet. I'm, my question really is like how how in terms of percentage how much are oh, we, the percentage. How much closer are we getting to the required amount if we if we make that change uh, right now we're at 12 percent um, let me see if I can use my phone <laughs> thank you I'm not a math person so I <laughs> <appreciate> <laughs> yeah, probably we'll be shy than 15 percent we still be shy than 15%. But it would be a lot closer, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. very close. Considerably closer. Yes. And then this, this property is very tight and it's not even a square. And in order to justify a project to remodel this gas station, it, it has to make sense to the developer. Without adding a small store, um, you know, he cannot, the, the owner cannot justify rebuilding this gas station. Um, we even reducing the number of pumps to make this project works. So um, as a follow-up question with that, um, if there, there's no store currently on the site, right? It's just the gas station. So do you anticipate that those parking spaces will be sufficient when you're adding another type of use? Okay, Particularly sure. Particularly if we take out a space um, to put more landscaping in? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think so because uh, gas station, uh, the convenience store and gas station uh, uh, works that the customer come to the pumps, park their car. Uh, they they probably takes like four or five minutes to fill their uh, the tanks for their cars. They walk to the store, they grab a drink or a snack, and then come back to the car and drive in. So technically speaking, ninety percent of the customers. I use those uh, fueling positions as parking to for, for, for the convenience store. So because it's a gas station and, and the store, you know, uh, is small, I think is going to be sufficient. Currently, there is a small uh, kiosk that they sell some stuff in it, and there is an ATM uh, in there. Uh, and there is no uh, Stripe parking stall other than uh, an ADA parking stall. So I, 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 I do think that it will work. Great, thank you very much for clarifying that. Mr. Chair, if I could offer, I did some quick math for the benefit of the commission and based on the dimensions of the lot uh, and the dimensions of the stall, it's about an equivalent of about 1.8% increase, I believe if my math is correct, based on a 10,000 foot lot and an increase of about 187 square feet. So you're going from, uh, I think it's what, 12% currently to 13.8, roughly 14%, but you are still in need of the exception sought, but you are closer to the target, much like the canopy coverage. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for your mathematical skills. Um, Mr. Calling, uh, any other comments or questions from commissioners at this point? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to the public comment on this item. And we ask if there's any members of the public who would be interested in making comment. If you are, please uh, raise your hand or um, <clears throat> you can call in. We have a, a call in number, do we not, Mr. Secretary? Mr. Secretary, you're on mute. You're muted, Ethan. I was muted, apologies. Yes, there is a phone number for those wishing to provide comment by phone. That number is 1-669-900-6833. Again, that's 669-900-6833. I'm looking over our attendee list and I've consulted with my colleagues. Uh, we don't currently have any members of the public wishing to speak. Um, those who may be watching, I'll remind the folks at home, there is across the bottom of your screen the uh, Zoom ID if you wish to log in to comment. 
Also, there's about a 10 to 12 second delay between live events occurring on Zoom and the broadcast being filtered through the internet on the city's website. So those of you who may have been tuned in on Granicus through the city's website, hopefully I've talked long enough to provide you the opportunity to log into Zoom. And again, consulting the list and my colleague, we do not have any public comment, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, so at this time, we'll go ahead and close the public comment on this particular uh, topic, and we'll move forward with uh, the commission considerations. Uh, would any commissioner like to, to begin with any questions of staff, perhaps the applicant, um, or uh, any other comments? We'll go ahead and Mr. Commissioner Kraselik. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm happy with the project. Um, and if the owner believes he can make this work with only two parking spaces, I believe it would be nicer to have just a little more landscaping there. So I believe we can make the findings and I'm in support of the project. Okay, any other commissioner like to weigh in? Uh, we'll go to start with uh, Commissioner Anderson. Yeah, I think the, the uh, I saw in the staff report that indicated that the staff and the app are going to work for about two years to to uh, fine tune this. And I believe it's an extremely tight site. And I think they've done uh, pretty much all that they can. Uh, there's the question of the, the parking space versus landscaping. I don't have a strong opinion either way on that one. Um, but I think the exceptions are really quite minimal and uh, uh, there's a good reason for, for both of them. So, I'm in favor of the project as well. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. We'll go ahead and uh, next to Commissioner Strongman. Yes, I concur with my other commissioners. Uh, I believe that the space for increased landscaping would be a great idea than to move the air pumps towards the, the building to get more landscaping. I agree that all of the other exceptions are very, very reasonable and support the project. Okay, thank you for that, Commissioner Strong. And we'll go ahead to Commissioner Pickett. Yeah, I, I look forward to this project moving forward. I'm kind of on the fence on two stalls versus three, but I guess I'd be leaning a little bit toward uh, the two stalls with the additional landscaping. Um, but I could be persuaded the other way. But I, I think it would be better with a little more landscaping. I don't think it would impact the, the value of the project to the owner. Uh, okay, Commissioner Ward or Riser, either of you interested in commenting at this time? Just really quick, thank thank Chip for the presentation, and um, it is a very very tight lot, and it's going to be it's an I don't want to say it's an eyesore, it's an old old park, it's it's a, an old project as it sits right now, and it's going to be a major improvement on that corner. Personally, I would uh, I could go either way on the boat with regard to two versus three spaces, but I would be one to favor more parking over over 187 square feet of additional landscaping and leave it as is. I'm not sure how much landscaping you're expecting on a, on a corner like that, but by the time you get the canopy, the store in place and the new pumps and everything like that, I think it's going to look like a, a nice project on the corner. So I'm in favor and would vote either way on the two versus three, but I lean toward three. Um, okay. And then just finally weighing in, I agree. It's an upgrade for a very long standing non-conforming use. It's going to look a lot better um, when it's, when it's fixed up. And I think that'll be a benefit to the entire area. And it seems to be an appropriate use of a really difficult site. So um, generally I prefer to see um, landscaping over parking spaces, but it seems like a useful parking space um, that has a purpose and it's not a particularly uh, lush and uh, landscaped general intersection anyway. So I don't think it makes a big difference to the overall appearance of that um, intersection or the neighborhood generally. So whatever pencils out best to make it work um, is fine with me. Um, but I think it's a great project and let's move along. Yeah. Okay, well, it's it sounds like we have uh, uh, some, not a, not a clear decision on exactly how to move forward with the parking space recommendation it does sound like we're all in agreement that we support the project, that we believe that all of the findings have been made by staff for the exceptions that are being requested, that even if we were to remove one parking stall in favor of landscaping, that that exception would still be, need to be granted. So I personally 
um, as much as I have a lot of um, design comment and concern, would be willing to leave that item up to the applicant and the design review commission to work out, uh, would approve the application as it is now without feeling like I needed to give guidance. I, I understand uh, how you feel, Commissioner Pickett, that it, it, it's important for this to go back to design review, uh, but I'm not sure that I feel strongly enough either way. And I do believe that that's more of the role of the design review commission in this. So uh, my suggestion is to just go ahead and move forward with the resolution as it is written now without giving a formal recommendation to the to the Design Review Commission, unless someone else feels more strongly and wants to step in. Commissioner Priscelli. Um, I agree with you, Chair, and I will move to approve draft resolution approving conditional use permit for application number Y17097 to allow the remodeling and reconstruction of the existing non-conforming gas station including the requested exceptions to supplementary development regulations and to allow the concurrent sales of alcoholic beverages and leave the decision on park one parking space versus landscaping up to the owner and uh, design review. I'll second. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second on the table. Uh, Commission yeah. Secretary, would you please call for the vote? And I believe the second was from Commissioner Pickett, or did I mishear that? Well, there was three seconds, so you pick one. <laughs> pick one. Bob works. Very good. I'll begin with uh, the he who made the motion, uh, Commissioner Kerselik. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Pickett. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Reiser. Yes. Commissioner Strongman. Yes. And Chair Pickett. I'm sorry, Chair Lezak. Yes. Thank you. The motion, uh, the motion carries unanimously 7-0. Okay, thank you. That uh, closes you. that particular project. We'll now move forward with the public hearing for uh, the project B on your agenda, the 7-Eleven Convenience Market and Union 76 Service Station, Design Review CUP application number Y19-090. And we will turn this over to staff for a staff presentation, Mr. Griffin, please. If uh, before it begins, if I can also clarify, if there were any ex parte communications on this item, if we could have that clarification, Mr. Chair. Hearing none, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you again, Chair. My, my name is Chip Griffin, it hasn't changed. I'm a senior planner here with the, uh, well, not here, but where I work at City Hall for the city of Walnut Creek. Um, I'm here tonight to present to you another, well, it's a service station, although it's not a service station, it's a convenience market with gasoline sales, and I'm going to share my screen. With any luck, this is the right one. Let's see. Okay. Yes, this is the right one. I'm sorry. Um, I, I was a little confused there for a second, but um, I'm here to present uh, Y19090. This is a use permit for a Union 76 7-Eleven. The use here is going to change from service station to convenience market with gasoline sales, hence the need for a use permit. Um, this site is, is at a very prominent corner in the city at, at the, at the north, northwest corner of the intersection of North Civic Drive and Ignacio Valley Road. It's shown here in brown. It's zoned central retail. It is in the north downtown specific plan area, which includes new road sections. So there's going to be a dedication of roadway and some street improvements that are included with this. And we're gonna take a closer look at that. This, this project too is subject to the supplementary development regulations for again, service stations or 
and or convenience markets with gasoline sales. It's been in service since 1971 as a, as a service station. Um, uh, it was originally, the, the earliest we could find for a use permit was UP 0249 November 1990. That is when the zoning changed. Um, prior to that, it was a buy right use. Uh, this aerial, let's get to it. Um, this aerial shows the existing condition. You can see it has access points on Civic and two on Ignacio Valley Road currently. Um, that this, uh, the westerly access point on Ignacio Valley Road will be um, removed as the new store will be set back against that property line. I'd also like to point out um, in this, this, this slide actually shows the property line a little bit better than the last project. Whereas that westerly blue line shows a sidewalk looking um, strip. Um, it's about, I think, believe it's five feet wide along parallels to that westerly property line. That is an easement that belonged to, that was belonged and used by Belongs when they had their headquarters next door with Rio currently. Um, the um, applicant has had success in negotiations in gaining or, or abandoning that easement or making that easement go away one way or another. And um, although we don't have anything written, I did receive an email just today from um, uh, Essex Corporation who owns Brio saying that they are more than willing to abandon that easement or, or, or in other words, get rid of it um, at the expense of the applicant. Let's see, so um, what else is shown here? Right, the building here um, along the northerly side, it has three service bays and a small mini market. It's not big enough to be considered a convenience store. So this is a service station as it's currently, as it's currently operating. Uh, the new project will include a 2,810 square foot 7-Eleven market. You can see how it's pushed into that west side, encumbering a portion of that easement. And that's why it was so important for that easement to uh, be abandoned. Um, this project includes a new canopy, four new pump islands. There's currently four, will be replaced with four. Um, includes site work. There's 11 parking spaces. I believe 13 are shown, but 11 are required. Um, the there's going to be a shuffling of parking spaces at the um, fronting the store, and that's to uh, provide or uh, accommodate a full ADA space and, and I believe an ADA EV space. And also the other one will be eliminated at that landscape, at that large landscape area at the corner of Civic Magnesia Valley. So it'll be the, the, the one on the the bottom, the south side. Uh, uh, the project also includes new landscaping, lighting, and signage. And this will be a complete scrape and, and rebuild. Um, new trash enclosure up on the north side of the 7-Eleven building. Um, new underground storage tanks and off-site street improvements for North Downtown specific plan along the Nation Valley Road frontage. And we'll take a closer look at that. The entitlements required for this are a conditional use permit, which requires a DRC recommendation, which it did, which it did receive. Um, it's a standard conditional use permit, plus those supplementary development regulations to be applied for convenience market for gasoline sales, and also a use permit for the concurrent sales of gasoline and alcohol beverages. The um, design review made a recommendation, um, made a recommendation to the planning commission to uh, in support of this project. They will then consider a final design review should the Planning Commission grant the easement. The, um, the street improvements uh, are, are in, the, in the area shown in the yellow, blue, and green strip. Uh, you can see right down through the blue strip where the current property line is. And the dedication would be at the northerly boundary of that yellow strip. So it's, 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 it's somewhere between seven and eight feet is the dedication. 
Um, you know, and if, if we look at what these things mean, the green strip, and you know, I'll, I'll show up a section in just a second, but the green strip is for a uh, planter biofilter strip. The blue strip would be, blue and yellow strip would be combined to be a, um, a uh, pedestrian bike, a uh, 14 foot pedestrian bike way. The blue would be dedicated for bikes, I think theoretically, and the yellow would be dedicated for pedestrians. And there's, here's a section out of the North Downtown Specific Plan that shows that half street section uh, from the, um, the future half right away down on the bottom, you can see the 63 foot proposed future half right away. It's currently 56. So there's a, it shows, clearly shows where that dedication is going to be and what those, and what those, um, and how it will be used with the, with the bioretention retention and planting and then the shared use path. Um, I thought I would just, Throw this in. Um, it's a, this is the, the version of the architecture that went through the DRC for study session. They gave some pretty good comments on this. It's going to change the look of this building a, a little bit. Um, uh, some heights and head heights, the uh, colors, materials will probably remain the same, but um, some things will change, and it's just in, it's up for further re, further development. Um, with, with that, um, staff would recommend that the Planning Commission approve draft resolution adopting conditional use permit Y19090 for convenience market with gasoline sales and current sales of alcoholic beverages. I should, I should state for the record that the same comments would go for this as the prior project for con regarding concurrent sales and that PD, uh, Walnut Creek Police Department, has had no issues at this at, at this site and um, anticipates and, and, and anticipates the same moving forward with this project. Are there any questions of staff? Uh, any commissioners have any questions of staff at this time? Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. Uh, Commissioner Strong, then we'll start with you. Yes, I have one question on uh, basically traffic flow, because I know that currently when traffic is backed up to cross Ignatia Valley Road at that intersection, oftentimes people will cut through that property to make a eventually a right turn to go down towards the BART station. Is there any way that this new development or new project will help to eliminate that cut through? Well, I don't believe that ever came up. Um, let's take a look at the current site. There is a uh, lot of, it is, it's, pretty, it's a pretty wide section of, 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 of pavement there. Um, it would be blocked off a little bit. Uh, there would be some calming, but, um, but it, that was not studied. Okay. Thank you. Uh, other commissioners have questions? Commissioner Anderson next. Uh, Chip, the, the, um, there was a comment in the staff report that uh, 13 uh, parking spaces are provided, but only 11 are required. Um, um, again? The, the 13 spaces are provided, but only 11 are required. And I wasn't clear whether that there was a recommendation that it be reduced to 11 or simply put out there as a possibility. Uh, we recommended when it when it came to light, we re, we re, we let them know about that about that reduction in the requirement, and recommended that that uh, to add more landscaping in the um, at that at that landscape section. Um, one of them was one reason was to guarantee the seven foot minimum width, which which they have achieved, and they were also able to um, develop further the parking situation at the front of the store. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. Sorry, unmute. Okay. Um, so I was unclear um, with regard to the bike pedestrian lane, whether or not those are separate lanes or not. Can you confirm that they are? 
Um, I, I, uh, having been done a long stint on transportation, I, I have a, a theory that, you know, sharrowing is a harrowing and I'm not in favor of these multi-use things. I don't know why my little slogan never caught on, but you know, there you go. Um, so can you, can, can, we, can I, we, I, I can, I can not, I, I, I can, don't. I can not clarify that. Um, possibly Ethan can, um, if, if, if he was in, in a, a part of the discussions with the specific plan, but these are straight out of the specific plan. Yeah, okay. Um, well, that's an important issue to me. I don't think a combination bike pedestrian uh, roadway is really acceptable there. That's a major biking thoroughfare to the um, BART station. And I don't think we should have pedestrians in harm's way um, where vehicles are traveling. So, uh, I'm sure if, I, if I may, um, the dedication of, land, of a right of way at that location for the features you see shown on the screen at the moment, the design of the, those are illustrative. This is not the design and the final features that will, let me, let me rephrase. These will be the features included within the right of way, the design of which has not yet been completed and it will be a city project. So to your point, the, to the extent that there may be a desire to separate the pedestrians from the bicyclists, that could be achieved through design. This is not intended as the design. This is intended for the future use, if you will, of the right of way. And so we appreciate your comments and we can pass them along through engineering. Though there is an engineering representative on the uh, call staff uh, okay. on the, the, the meeting. But today. there's enough, like there's the full 14 feet that's required to have that those two uses um, coexist as you know the specific plan uh, uh, shows here. There is. is. It, it's, it's 14. Right. Through okay. the dedication, there will be adequate space, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Pickett next. Yeah, I'm on the same topic there. Um, the plans uh, that accompanied the application that we received did not appear to conceive that this 14 feet of pavement would be constructed. Um, the landscape plan in particular shows just a, like a typical city sidewalk and the engineering plans don't really make it clear. So I guess I would want to clarify that it is the applicant's obligation in this uh, project to complete 14 feet of pavement that will accommodate bicycles and ped pedestrians, regardless of what design details uh, they come up with, with regards to physical separation of pedestrians and bicycles, other than creating a medium between them, which is gonna reduce one, one path or the other or both. Um, but the applicant is required to put in 14 feet of pavement, correct? The applicant is, 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 is required to dedicate and engineer and construct the improvements that that are yet to be that are yet to be designed that this is led as as mr Binder, Binder Nagel said this is a illustrious drawing right but the, the the applicant's obligation is to build Correct. not just not just make a dedication but to actually put in the physical infrastructure that would accommodate pedestrians and bicycles in accordance with this conceptual design of a 14 foot pathway. Correct. They have to build it, right? That's correct. correct. I would actually offer if uh, Ryan Cook, who's the engineering representative on staff, if he's able to shed any light or clarity, I'd invite him to do so if you could unmute. Hi, uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Ryan Cook, associate engineer with the city of Walnut Creek. Um, it is, uh, I'm going through the conditions of approval here, but it's my understanding that at this time, the dedication of the right-of-way is the primary importance. Um, there is a limit to the extent of which a 14 foot path can be put in there at this time. Um, a lot of that has to do with the extension of the right-of-way as you go down Ignatio with the adjacent properties. Um, and we cannot continue that at this time all the way down, all the way to the BART station. But it is in the long-term plan um, and we will uh, make it as uh, feasible as we can. So that way when we come in and do those improvements, they can be done without the acquisition of additional right away. So who pays if, if it gets done in the future? And I understand in this cross section that we're looking at, we've got 14 feet and without the dedication to the West, part of that 14 feet runs into a fence or a wall or something. 
um, if it's not constructed at this time, who is responsible for the cost in the future when this eventually might get built? Um, I'm not exactly sure on the uh, the answer to that, on whether it would be city funded or uh, paid by the property owners. Uh, there are options that have been done in the past with um, future street improvements where the uh, those costs have been put onto the property owners and reimburse the city when we do come through to improve it. Um, but there there are options there on, on how that is handled. Okay, is there any discussions of a deferred improvement agreement on this? Uh, I am not aware of one at the time, but it's uh, something that will be worked out as we move forward. Okay, I think we have to work it out tonight. Um, so you know, we need to make a definitive decision uh, whether the applicant's responsible for building this now, if it's gonna be deferred, who's gonna pay for it, rather than just approve Unless if we approve accepting the right of way and don't require any additional frontage improvements, the city is going to pay for it in the future. So it's something that should be considered at, at this juncture of approval of the project. How is that going to be handled? Actually, um, if, Commissioner Pickett, if I could offer um, 20 uh, on page five of the proposed resolution, condition number 20 uh, requires that the developer shall construct and dedicate to the full, to the public full street improvements equal to 56 feet from center line as Chip highlighted in his presentation, including curb, uh, concrete curb, gutter, 14 foot multi-use path, landscaping, et cetera, uh, skipping ahead, all to the satisfaction of the city engineer in conformance with the conceptual configuration in the North downtown specific plan. So the, again, the final details of that design are subject to the re, uh, review and approval of the city engineer, but the requirement will be as conditioned in this resolution, as part of this uh, project, this use permit, will require that those project, uh, those improvements be made, all to the satisfaction, again, of the city engineer in consultation with what was envisioned through the North Downtown Plan. Okay, so then then I would, I, and frankly, thank you for bringing that up, because I did I did read that uh, condition 20, and that was part of my confusion, because uh, the engineering and landscape drawings did not show that that was going to be built. The only drawing, which is, I don't, uh, that, that might show it is this one here. So we had a conflict between the condition that says they're going to build it. Sounds like the city engineer has a little different take on it too. Um, might be built in the future, which means the applicant isn't building it. Condition says they are going to build it. So I guess if we approve this resolution the way it is, it gets built by the applicant at the time of construction or the applicant can negotiate his way out of it with a deferred improvement agreement. I mean, I would offer that we've had other instances where deferred improvement agreements have been used for future construction of public features, in this case, the 14-foot path, et cetera. And again, I would, I would leave it to the city engineer. There certainly is a requirement for a site development permit for this project, and there is a condition of requiring, uh, clearly stating the developer shall construct and dedicate uh, those improvements. Um, I think that the staff and the city engineer, given the direction and the if approved, the, the direction of this condition that it will be clear what the intention is the commission relative to the improvements along that frontage. Okay. Um, to me, it would seem prudent to include uh, some reference to the possibility of a deferred improvement agreement. Um, city attorney might weigh in on that. Um, I did, you know, this does, this doesn't say they're going to build it. So without our approval of anything else, the applicant is obligated to build it based on the approval that we might make tonight. I mean, right. just to add to, to uh, Mr. Benegal's comment, uh, the condition is there and the developer is going to be obligated to be held to that condition. And so um, the city does have some flexibility in determining how that would be enforced. So um, even if it's not stated in the condition, a deferred improvement agreement could be one of the alternatives um, to meet this obligation in the future. Okay, so your your opinion would be that we don't need to identify the option of a deferred improvement agreement because the applicants required to build it, how they determine to do that with the city engineer can be worked out as long as 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is in the future. If this gets improved, the applicant, the property owner at that time is obligated to pay that cost. Is that correct? Yes. And if the commission desires to do that tonight, um, an alternative could be added to Condition 20, or as an extra condition under streets and utilities, that an alternative option to meet these 
um, construction and dedication op- obligations is to enter into a deferred improvement agreement with the city. Okay. I, 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 I would like to add one thing. Yeah. For some uh, clarity, um, I have kind of I have confirmed that it is the city engineer's preference to have them build these improvements as part of this project and not do it as a deferred improvement agreement. Um, and along with that, the reason they're not shown on here was uh, as we're going through and working with their engineer to not hold up coming to planning commission. But those improvements will be shown when they go back to design review for final approval with them. OK, great. I bet that helps a lot. Uh, thank you very much. I got one other question. Um, and maybe maybe uh, Chip knows this. Maybe the applicant has to address it. But is this 7-Eleven going to replace the 7-Eleven that's two blocks to the north? That's a good question. It's one I've been wanting to ask the um, applicant who I should introduce. Her name is Chandra May. She's she's here and does not have a presentation, but she is here to answer questions. Okay. And, um, uh, and we'll let that happen when we get to that point, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, hey, other commissioners, we'll move back to Commissioner Strongman. Oh, one question, do we have any bicycle parking at that uh, the building? Uh, I believe there's a condition of approval that requires bike parking. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other commissioner questions or comments of staff at this point? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna jump in for just one quick one, last one for Mr. Cook. Um, I see within that street dedication area, a section for a planning zone and bioretention. So help me understand whose water uh, is going through that process there. Is that water's city water from the right of way improvements, the walkways that we're cleaning and treating and that are going in as city treatment facilities or does the applicant have water from their site that's also being treated in those facilities? Uh, that is an excellent question. Um, for the area within the public right of way, any future bioretention that is placed there will be for public water only. Um, all private water that is going to be treated uh, as required with C3 for this project will be treated on site. Okay, thank you. I, I guess I didn't look at it that closely. Was there a a C3 bioretention plan submitted as part of the application? Um, I know that we have not discussed within the public right away. Uh, there is one as part of the plans currently for all the on site, um, and there are still many details that we're going to be working out uh, before final design review approval. So, but it's, it's city staff's opinion that the applicant has sufficient landscape spaces and bioretention plan within their current design that they'll be able to meet the requirements as you guys go into construction documents. Uh, that, that is correct. Um, there are some challenges currently in terms of where it's located and how some water is going to get there, but we're confident that we'll be able to work those, those issues out. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to come back to the landscape versus parking issue. Uh, I didn't see the need for an, ex an exception in this particular case. Is that true, Mr. Griffin? Do they meet the, the requirement? There are no there are no exceptions requested. Okay, so where did we land with the number of parking spaces? We still have more parking spaces than we need, and but we also don't need a landscape exception. So they meet the landscape requirement, and we get the bonus of having additional parking spaces. Um, if, if if that's the way you see it, um, I, I I have seen a a further development of this, especially the parking at the store, which eliminates one of the spaces on the plan you see to provide um, uh, more parking for for more people. Right? Not more people, but um, uh, for an, an EV an EV parking, and then also a full ADA spot. And it, and it so, fits better, it programs better than, than what you see here. And, but, and also to lose the other spot, to your point, uh, in, land, in the landscaping area, you would gain more landscaping, but it's not necessary to get to get the 15%. So if we were to take action on this item tonight in a favorable manner, we go back to the Design Review Commission, and the Design Review Commission can work through the balance of 
parking and landscape uh, separately without having to make that decision or, or recommendation this evening on the planning commission's path. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, that's all the questions I have for now. And unless we have any other commissioners that would like to come back to staff, we would move forward with the public comment period and step up to the applicant. I understand they don't have a formal presentation tonight, but if the applicant would like to introduce themselves uh, and perhaps provide any additional information on the topic of questions this evening, otherwise they could step forward and perhaps commissioners can ask questions if they have any. Good evening. My name is Chandra Mihi, representing Tate and Associates, uh, representing 7-Eleven. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Thank you. Um, nice to meet all of you. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, these are interesting, challenging times. So we appreciate uh, that uh, Planning Commission is moving forward, facilitating these um, Zoom meetings so we can move this project forward. We understand it's not an easy process. So we appreciate that. Um, I'm here tonight, um, again, representing 7-Eleven. I have with me uh, my design team, a civil engineer who worked on this project, who I know is anxious to answer some questions for you, as well as 7-Eleven. Uh, uh, we have several um, members of 7-Eleven here who are also available to answer questions. Um, Chip did a really nice job summarizing the project. I appreciate the thorough introduction there. Um, I would just like to kind of, um, close some loops before I bring the rest of my team in to um, who are more knowledgeable on, on your specific questions. Um, I can tell you that we left design review and took every comment that they gave us and we've been furiously addressing those comments. Um, and we do feel that we um, have thoroughly addressed uh, them and we're excited to bring that the updated package to you. The, um, Site plan, we did reduce based on the recommendation to 11 parking spots. So we are currently showing 11, 11 parking spots. And if you take a look at the uh, shared use exhibit, um, that is the current site plan with the accurate number of parking spots. So that will give you a better idea. The landscape exhibit has been revised to show that as well. So um, like I said, we definitely, made quite a bit of progress addressing those comments. Uh, the shared use, I think, is, is definitely something that we need to address and clear up here. I'd like to see if our civil engineer, John Romaguera, is available to address those comments and questions. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is John Romaguera, civil engineer with Tate & Associates. And yes, in regards to the shared uh, use path, it is indicated on our civil plan that it, um, the right of way dedication on Ignacio Valley Road was uh, to accommodate a future shared use path, a future 14 foot shared use path and a six foot planting zone slash bioretention per the city's North downtown specific plan. That dedication request came specifically from the engineering department. Um, at no point in time have we proposed to actually build those improvements at the, um, as a part of this project. I, I think the intent of, um, of the, the whole dedication is to, acquire the land now and come do the improvements all at once so you don't have a piecemealed project. Um, but that, that's my input on that. Uh, okay, uh, Chandra, do you have anyone else in your team that you would like to, to bring forward and answer any other questions before we, or, or speak before we take this to the commission for questions? I don't think so. I think we have answered the questions that came to us. If there are any additional, we're well, we're happy to um, address those and answer those. Uh, but I think uh, we're good at this time. Okay. Any commissioners want to jump in at this point? Uh, 
Uh, Mr. S uh, Commissioner Strongman. Yes, uh, the question was raised uh, earlier is what happens to the 7-Eleven that's on the about two blocks away? Uh, this is Crystal Justice uh, 7-Eleven. At this point in time, we haven't had any internal discussions on um, eliminating that site. Our intention is to keep that site operating as well as this one. Okay. Thank you. Any other commission questions at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will let the applicant stand down for now and we will move to open the public comment to other members of the public. Uh, if anyone from the public who is on the, on the Zoom meeting or would like to call in, uh, now is your opportunity to indicate to city staff that you're interested in making a public comment. And we will check in with the commission secretary. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment at this time? At present, we don't see any, but I'd like to take the opportunity for those who may be watching on our Granicus feed, which as mentioned in the previous item, Granicus runs about 10 to 12 seconds behind the live feed here on our Zoom feed. And so to provide them an opportunity, if they are watching at home, I'm going to talk another five seconds or so. The opportunity to join the web ID and the password is listed at the bottom of the channel and is also provided on the Planning Commission's agenda for this evening. If you are looking to join by phone, the number that you can dial is area code 669-900-6833. Again, 669-900-6833. Having spoken for at least 10 or 12 seconds, uh, looking at the consulting with the uh, my colleague, there appear no more public comments and turn it back to you, Chair Buzak. Uh Thank you, Commissioner Secretary. Um, well, normally we would have a rebuttal opportunity by the applicant for closing remarks by the applicant. Uh, I'm not sure if, if they feel the need to do that, given that there were no other public comments. Uh, but I'll just ask briefly, does the applicant uh, wish to make any other closing remarks before we close the public uh, hearing? I think just to close, I want to again thank uh, thank you for your time and your consideration for this project. And uh, we're very excited. We understand this is a prominent corner and we're respectful of the fact that this is a prominent corner of your town. And uh, we're putting great care to make sure that we have a quality project that we're presenting. Okay, thank you very much. So with that, we'll close the public comment period and we'll turn back to the commission uh, for commissioner comments or additional questions of staff or anyone else at this point. Uh, would any member of the commission like to begin? Commissioner Pickett. Um, I, I think it's a good project. I, I look forward to seeing another improvement in the city of Walnut Creek. Um, I would support it and um, I would support it with the condition number 20, as it is written, requiring the applicant to be responsible for the construction of the pedestrian path and the bicycle path. Um, but just, you know, I don't think we need to include any more in the conditions of approval. I think that the city engineer can determine with the applicant how that gets accomplished. And if it's through the you know, form of a deferred improvement agreement, that's fine. But I think with the application, the applicant has to be responsible for the cost of those improvements per the uh, North specific plan, North downtown specific plan. So I'd support it, including that condition and would ask the, or make sure the applicant understands what that means to them. Uh, okay. Um, Commissioner Secretary, do you mind if we step out and ask the applicant to step back and answer the question? the commissioner's question. Not a problem. We would reopen the public hearing. I doubt we'll have public comment, but we could check and sure, feel free, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we're gonna reopen the public hearing and ask the applicant to come forward uh, for a, an additional question from the commission. Uh, so the question on the table is, does the applicant uh, understand and accept the language of condition number 20 in the resolution that's been presented to you and that is before us tonight? That that, that that condition requires the applicant to construct those improvements to the satisfaction of the city engineer. Uh, we understand from the context of the discussion that it may be to the satisfaction of the city engineer to do a deferred improvement agreement if they 
so choose, but otherwise, or in any event, the applicant is responsible for the cost of those improvements. Um, do you understand that? Yes, can you hold for one minute, please? Yeah, so this is John Romaguera, civil engineer, and we understand the language and the condition, but I guess what I would ask is if that was really the intent from the engineering department, everything that I've seen to date in the comment letters um, were that, that, that it was intended for that to be a future improvement. It's very clear in those comment letters from engineering that it's uh, just a dedication for a future improvement. Uh, okay, thank you for for uh, that explanation. I, I believe that the condition itself is pretty clear. The condition is before us and the city staff, Mr. Cook with the engineering department did explain to us during the hearing that, that it was the city's intent that those improvements be constructed by the applicant. So now I'll come back to the applicant and re-ask the question, uh, does the applicant, applicant team understand and, and accept that condition that's in the resolution for us tonight? We understand and accept the condition. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Um, do you want to make any other comments at this point, or do, would you mind if we just move back to the completion of, of the public comment period? No, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mission Secretary, we therefore now need to move back into the open public comment period in the event that someone from the community has a comment to follow up on that. Uh, are there anyone from the community that wishes to make a public comment? Uh, during this time, I've been monitoring the attendee list. I have not seen any new names appear and I do not see anyone with a raised hand feature. I'll conclude there is no one on the attendee list wishing to speak. Okay, well, thank you for entertaining our sidebar. And, and with that, we will reclose the public comment period and come back to the commission questions and considerations. Uh, thank Commissioner Pickett for making sure that we clarified that item. I believe that's one of the major items that's been brought up by the commission tonight. Uh, is there anyone else on the commission who'd like to step in at this moment? Commissioner Krasellik. You're on mute. Sorry, thank you, Chair. Um, seeing that there aren't a whole lot of other comments, um, I believe that um, the applicant is responsible for the improvements and how that gets done can be worked out successfully with uh, city engineering staff. So I'm willing to move to approve the draft resolution adopting CUP Y19090 for the convenience market with gasoline sales and concurrent sales of alcoholic beverages at 690 Ignacio Valley Road. I second. Uh, the roll call vote will begin. Uh, Vice Chair Kersilic? Yes. Uh, Chair Strongman? No, Commissioner Strongman. Yes. I apologize. I'm scrambled this evening. Apologies, Commissioner Strongman. Yes. Apologies to everyone else here on the uh, the meeting. Uh, Commissioner Pickett. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yeah. Commissioner Reiser. Yes. And Chair Lezak. Yes. Seven uh, seven zero. The ayes have it. Motion approved. Okay. Thank you. With that, we will close the hearing on this particular item and move forward uh, in the public hearings agenda to item C in your agenda, which is the project Hanna Trust Added Building Mixed Use Addition Pre-Application Review, application number Y19-124. And with that, we will uh, ask for city staff to make a presentation. Uh, Commissioner, uh, pardon me, Chair Lezak, if I could also ask if there are any ex parte communications to be clarified before the item begins. Yes. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, the applicant and the architect, Carl Campos, several months ago, uh, which time they showed me some preliminary plans. I don't know if they're exactly what we're reviewing tonight, but I did have that discussion with them several months ago. 
And any other commissioners? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, we'll move forward with the staff presentation. Yes. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Alan Carrion, Associate Planner with the Community and Economic Development Department. Uh, the item for you this evening, and I'm going to go ahead and share my uh, screen. And uh, just for clarification, um, I am on two systems. The video is on my phone and my desktop. Uh, and I think because I'm logged in twice, it has the same ID. Uh, so we will go to this one. Oops. It's not working. Hold on. Please stand by. Uh, Ethan, if you could uh, switch, disable this login and go to the other. That's the other one that's not showing. Oh, uh, yeah, the the presentation is not showing. We're going to uh, stand by, please. We'll figure that out one moment. I have some indication that that should be ready to go, Alan. Okay, I don't, I should see it on my screen and I don't. So let, let me see if I can disable this one. I'll just go audio on this one. Uh, let's try one more time, Alan. I believe we've fixed things on this end. Let's try one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, I believe it's because I'm logged in into two different locations. So, Planning Commissioners, we appreciate your patience. Um, we're going to bring in uh, Matt Bollander behind the scenes, who is uh, going to help us work this through. If you're patient, if you can be patient for just a moment. Hey, we got it. All right. Oh, mm, hold on. So we are sharing, Alan, for clarification, we're sharing this locally from the laptop here in the council chamber. And if you could just prompt us to move forward, we'll move. Oh, each slide on sure. your okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolander. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Alan Carry again, Alan Carrion, Associate Planner, Community and Economic Development Department. Uh, the item for you this evening is a pre-application review, application number Y19124, Hanna Trust, a deep building mixed use addition located at 1426 South Main Street. Slide, please. Uh, the project concept is a, uh, is a conceptual two-story addition to an existing about a 3,700 square foot building. Uh, the proposal is to add about 3,216 square feet of uh, commercial floor area on the ground floor and include two residential units on the upper floor. Slide, oh. And of course, the uh, project would include additional parking. Next slide, please. The entitlements involved with this project um, include that uh, because the pro because the location is within specific plan number seven, uh, which is known as South Newell Avenue, actually should be south of Newell Avenue. In any case, uh, a requirement in that specific plan is for uh, projects within the area to aggregate driveways uh, unless there's a uh, sufficient evidence or acceptable evidence presented to the planning commission by the applicant why driveway aggregation, aggregation could not occur. An additional entitlement, because this project includes 
a proposal for residential uh, units uh, would be a conditional use permit for that use. And click these. The applicant is also uh, requesting um, potentially a uh, waiver from the general plan setback requirement. This uh, is language in the, in the general plan uh, that can be granted uh, by the highest approving body. Uh, based on the project scope, that would be the Planning Commission at this time. Click, please. Uh, the uh, project concept also would include a parking reduction and off-site parking. Typically, these two entitlements are reviewed by the uh, zoning administrator as a minor use permit. In this case, uh, the zoning administrator would uh, defer these requests to the Planning Commission because of the highest approving body for both the driveway aggregation and the setback waiver. And of course, the architectural design would be subject to design review. Next slide. The purpose of the pre-application study is to provide the opportunity for the applicant to solicit input and comment from the highest approving body, in this case, the Planning Commission, prior to expanding more uh, funds and financing of detailed plans and reports required of a formal application. The Planning Commission is requested to provide and evaluate the appropriateness of the concept, uh, identification of the issues which staff has highlighted and any others that they may identify through the course of review this evening, and also provide comments on the required likely or potential entitlements uh, within the scope of the project. Let's take a look at the location and click please. Click once please. Uh, the project is located here on South Main Street, south of the intersection of South Main and Newell Avenue. Uh, in this aerial image, the, um, if you click once, please. There it is, that's the property. The property is a little bit over one half acre. Uh, directly across the street uh, to the west is Kaiser Medical Center. To the north is, last time I checked, Pacific Bay Coffee Company and a uh, salon to the uh, south. Uh, one click, please. Along the west, the uh, property um, just touches upon the uh, Las Trampas Creek. And uh, as we can see, the uh, creek way is uh, heavily vegetated with uh, trees. And the, I don't know if anybody went there this evening, but the, uh, the edge of the property or, or edge of the creek bank is, is quite steep. And one click, please. Uh, one more click, please. So this is a more detailed aerial. Uh, we can see the one-story building, and uh, the white dotted line is a property line. Uh, if we take a look at the south driveway, you can note that um, the south driveway is also shared by the uh, property to the south. Uh, entering that driveway, you can park in front of the uh, subject building or circulate in a clockwise direction to the south, uh, to the building to the south, uh, noting that the angled stalls are oriented uh, for that movement. Uh, there is a, a uh, we'll, oh, we'll take a look at it here in a second, but there is a drive aisle that goes to the rear of the building. On the north, uh, you can also see the property line bisects the uh, drive aisle or the driveway, uh, which also serves the rear um, uh, or serves the parking area located to the rear of the uh, of the buildings to the north, uh, but the de those developments also have um, parking along Newell Avenue, uh, along the Newell Avenue frontage. And click, please. Uh, let's take a look at some images from ground level. Uh, here we're looking at the building from the southwest. Slowly, slowly, hold on. Okay, the second image, uh, top middle, is looking northwards uh, behind the building, and the picture on the top right is looking back towards that driveway. The bottom right image is uh, looking easterly at the north driveway, and one click, please. And this is these are the adjacent buildings uh, to the north, uh, ground floor retail and service uses, with office above and single story retail beyond. And click. Uh, I included this image uh, because 
the to note that the property line of uh, 1426 South Main uh, basically parallels those uh, vehicles pointed towards uh, the view or in the view. So this uh, trash enclosure is actually located off site. And next slide. This is existing condition. Uh, as we can see, the building is highlighted in, in uh, magenta. And the purpose of this is to show the uh, effect of the uh, specific plan um, creek setback. Uh, the creek preserve area is uh, 50 feet from center line of creek. And the setback from that creek preserve area is another 30 feet, which is uh, shown by the uh, outer or to the leftmost dotted line. As you can see by that, it, it crosses through the buildings and uh, leaving probably about 60% of the building outside of that, uh, of that zone and the rest of the property, which would be considered uh, buildable to stay out of that setback area. And next slide. And one more. This is the proposed site plan. Uh, the proposed addition would be in front of the existing building, uh, two stories. Uh, again, the applicant is, is requesting a setback from the um, general plan setback, a waiver from the general plan setback, which is a 25 foot average. The expectation is that buildings along South Main, in addition to providing a uh, 10 foot wide sidewalk, uh, the setback would be 20 to 30 feet. Uh, basically, that would put the, um, the buildable line uh, almost to the front of the existing building. And we'll take a look at a, uh, an exhibit prepared by the applicant here in a second. In terms of the parking stalls, uh, you can see the ones that are highlighted uh, with a gray dot. And one click, please. Uh, the existing site contains 16 stalls. The proposal uh, would be 18 on site, and the uh, stalls highlighted there, magenta, are actually off site. Uh, the property owner does have a, uh, an, uh, an agreement to which the city is not part uh, for those basically off site stalls um, and would uh, supplement the, 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 the on site stalls to a total of 21. And one click. Uh, this is the proposed addition on the right of the ground floor to expand the existing commercial floor area. And the applicant's concept includes two residential units above, a, a two bedroom and a three bedroom apartment. And one click. Uh, this is uh, the architect's rendering of the uh, design concept uh, for the, for the uh, addition uh, located uh, near the uh, property frontage. To give you a look and feel of what is uh, being conceived here. In one click, please. Uh, this is the applicant's exhibit uh, contained in your package. Uh, apologize for the uh, broken text. Uh, Adobe, uh, computer didn't recognize um, certain characters. But in any case, uh, the Blue band represents the, the, uh, the setback required by the general plan. The brown or rust color is the creek setback. Uh, and the area in magenta is the buildable area of the subject property. As you can see, this, uh, these, the effect of these requirements also affects other properties along this side of South Main Street. Um, parcel 30 would have a small buildable area. Parcel 03 and 02 basically uh, have very little uh, buildable area if all uh, requirements were enforced. Um, back to the subject property, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you can see the outline of the, uh, of the existing building. And click, please. Specific plan number seven allows uh, uh, residential development. 
uh, under a conditional use permit that would be subject to standard CUP findings. Specific plan number seven also includes this requirement to either aggregate driveway locations and provide information acceptable to the Planning Commission as to why it is not feasible to do so, and whenever possible, orient new development towards the creek. <coughs> and also to encourage retail and residential uses that, rather than office uses. Uh, the staff report does include other um, elements of the specific plan. Those are the three that were uh, worth noting. The project concept uh, would require a total of 32 parking stalls, 28 for the retail floor area and four for the residential. Again, 21 stalls, including the three off-site. <coughs> As proposed, uh, this would be a def deficit of 11. If the residential units were excluded, uh, the deficit would only be seven stalls, provided the, um, you know, the off-site stalls were accepted. Uh, there's also a parking reduction requested, um, potentially uh, six, six stalls for the commercial floor area. Uh, and one stall for the residential based on the balance of the uses on the property. And offsite parking, uh, there are findings required to be made, uh, one of which is the uh, city would be party into the agreement. Uh, offsite parking also requires guarantees uh, by the applicant to identify uh, essentially a plan B if those offsite parking stalls uh, become unavailable. Uh, if if they do become an unavailable, the city would be uh, would be would have discretion to enforce or for to enforce uh, the uh, property receiving the CUP or the minor use permit to uh, come up with a solution to provide uh, those supplemental stalls. The applicant did provide a parking study prepared by TJKM. Uh, the parking study TJKM concluded that. Under existing conditions, the 13 stalls would be sufficient to serve this particular use. Uh, in that survey uh, of, of operations, uh, demand equaled approximately one stall per 532 square feet. Now, staff does support this, uh, the conclusion by the uh, traffic and parking consultant. Uh, the sales of specialty rugs isn't really something you go window shopping for it's in a um it's more of a destination uh believe it's more of a destination retail for like uh appliances or a mattress where um you know you kind of just don't don't swing by and put one in your pocket and walk out the door uh, you make arrangements to to visit the showroom make your selection and those items are delivered so staff does support that condition, that conclusion that this isn't a typical retail use that would be required to provide one stall per 250 square feet of rentable floor area. And click, please. Some issues with the uh, reduction in parking is uh, the longer term use of the building. Let's say, for example, that uh, Adib's rugs uh, goes away, uh, goes out of business or moves. Uh, then we have a, a, uh, a property that would be uh, underparked, uh, inherently underparked. Please click. Inherently underparked, uh, unless the, unless the uh, the building were occupied by a similar use that has a similar parking demand. These are findings required for the uh, uh, parking space reduction shared parking and, or offsite parking. And we can uh, flash those on screen. So a reduction that there's clear convincing evidence. Keep going, B. And the long-term occupancy of the building uh, would, based on its design, will not generate additional parking demand. Again, this is a uh, retail building. The addition, for example, could be cut up into or retenanted into two salons. Uh, that's just conjecture in the future, but it's something to think about. And next slide, please. And offsite parking, that there's a, a peak demand criteria. Go ahead and scroll all through, through all of them. So 
adverse impacts, traffic circulation, a reasonable distance. Keep going. Next slide. And next slide. And the, uh, the Planning Commission would have uh, these guarantees uh, as conditions of approval, any or all of them, uh, would involve to involve the city attorney's office to review that offsite parking um, agreement. And you can go ahead and scroll through all of them. So there's the plan B and item C and, uh, and remedies for the city to uh, enforce uh, providing the parking or a substitute thereof. Next slide, please. Staff's recommendations to uh, receive public testimony and provide any and all comments and or recommendations on the conceptual plan. Uh, the next steps for this, uh, click once, please. The applicant uh, will evaluate the project concept based on input by the Planning Commission and uh, should the applicant decide to uh, move forward, then uh, staff will conduct a formal environmental analysis and process the application to the appropriate hearing bodies if, they, if that formal application does come forward. And with that, I am standing by for questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brinder Nagel. Okay, well, thank you for the presentation, Alan. We will now look to the commissioners to see if anyone has any questions or comments of staff. Commissioner Pickett? No, I don't have any questions of staff at this point. You you, you looked like you were about to raise your hand up. Uh, Commissioner oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I do have a question is, according to the um, specific plan seven, it's, it, implies that there should be allowed for a path along the creek for future access for public access is there enough space there to provide that in the future um along the creek bank yes it drops off quite precipitously i and the property abuts um uh abuts the creek only a very short distance i think 15, less than 15 feet, uh, but provisions could be made to, uh, you know, uh, have that as a requirement if and when that um, creek path project is ever undertaken. Oh, so there is space. Uh, it doesn't have to be included now, but that we're not putting a building there that would block it or anything to block it. Uh, there, there could be a parking stall or two if, if it's put on the top of bank. Yes, yeah. it would have, uh, parking would be affected. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, the uh, specific plan um, uh, proposal that whenever possible, uh, the develop, new development be oriented for the creek. I assume that with the the way that the creek basically impinges upon the lot itself, that's sort of a, a, a dead letter um, to begin with. There's no real possibility of doing it. Um, unless the unless the current building were demolished, uh, likely not. Okay. Any other commissioners questions of staff at this time? Okay, seeing none, we'll move forward with the uh, public comment period and we'll begin with the applicant. Uh, Mr. S Commissioner Secretary, is there a presentation? Does the applicant have a presentation? I will defer to Mr. Carry on to clarify if the applicant does or if Mr. Adib uh, would like to come on screen and clarify for us. And in the event that they don't have a presentation, uh, they should feel free to introduce themselves, respond to any questions that the commissioners may have and and uh, make any other comments that they'd like to make during this period. Yeah, Mr. Adib uh, does have a presentation uh, and uh, I believe Mr. Carl Campos of Loving Campos Architects is also on hand to provide comment.
good afternoon. Good afternoon, this is Hamed Adib. Uh, I'm here with my father, Ray Adib. I wanted to thank the Planning Commission uh, for taking the time uh, to give us feedback on our project. Um, can you see my screen? No. We can now see your screen. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Uh, just as a brief background, uh, my father started his business in Walnut Creek, uh, and he's been exclusively in Walnut Creek since 1974. Uh, we're celebrating our 36th year in Walnut Creek. 46. 46, sorry. Uh, we are a third generation family business uh, and uh, proud of what my father's built and trying to uh, help grow the business uh, and, and our surrounding community. Uh, just a brief history. We started uh, in 1974 on Bethello, um, and I know, uh, commissioners, that the parking request is, is going to be a uh, concern. Um, I'm hoping that our historical use, um, in 1974, we were at a shopping center. There was ample parking there. 1977, we were at 1530 Olympic, where we had five parking stalls only on the street. We had no parking stalls at our retail center. Uh, we then moved to 1406 North Broadway in 1987, where we had three stalls, uh, also street parking only. Uh, we then moved to 1375 North Main Street in 1997, where we had a 12,000 square foot showroom uh, with only five stalls in the rear of our uh, property. Uh, and we're hoping to land in our home at 1426 South Main uh, with a 6,900 square foot showroom, two residential units, and 21 stalls. Uh, I do apologize. Some of my slides are uh, duplicative of uh, Mr. Carrion, so I'm going to skip through it. Uh, these ones that are duplicative. Uh, a little bit about our product. Uh, we have been selling luxury products uh, since our inception. The majority of our work is done in our clients' homes. Uh, we are a low volume business and uh, hopefully the planning commission gives consideration to the parking study uh, and our specific use. Um, not gonna go through that. Uh, in terms of the design concept, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Carrion, Ms. Crawfoot, and uh, we've been working on this project for several years now. Uh, our initial proposal was more ambitious. Uh, we were trying to maximize the street frontage, uh, and in feedback that we got during our uh, pre PRT, uh, a recommendation was made in meeting with staff that we scale back uh, to the current proposal, which has more parking. Uh, stalls, less store frontage uh, that we hope to get your thoughts on. Um, we originally had proposed five residential. We re uh, reduced that down to two residential uh, with the hope that that would be uh, more agreeable. Um, the last point is that the um, creek setback prohibits us to build where uh, maybe we would be able to be more observant of the uh, setback. Uh, our neighbors are you know, relatively close to the street front and outside the setback. Uh, we appreciate your consideration of the request to uh, for, for uh, an exception to the setback. The, in response to some of the questions that came up, uh, you know, it really isn't feasible for us to uh, consolidate driveways with our uh, north and south properties uh, that um, we've approached them. There's really no incentive for the neighbors to eliminate their driveways and consolidate their driveways to ours. 
Um, there was a comment that suggested we should set the building back additional uh, five foot and if the planning commission deems fit, we have no objection to setting back an additional five feet. Uh, the uh, question about the uh, parking, uh, the current arrangement with the neighbor, uh, actually the whole existing parking arrangements have been in place for decades. Uh, the current arrangement, which is recorded on title, is revocable which means that either we or the neighbor could eliminate that three stall arrangement. Uh, I'm gonna go back to that exhibit. Uh, if we do eliminate that three stall arrangement, uh, all five of these parking stalls would be eliminated. We could then reorient these three stalls horizontally uh, within our property line, uh, but it would overall reduce the total number of parking available between us and the neighbor. Uh, it would not, uh, I don't think it would be beneficial to our neighbor, and I don't see any reason why we would uh, proceed down that path. But I think uh, in working with uh, hopefully the city attorney reviewing it, uh, the fact that the three parking stalls could be reoriented uh, is uh, persuasive. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, our tenure in Walnut Creek and the fact that we are a third generation family business is persuasive that we are here to stay. Uh, this property is hopefully our home. Uh, we, we believe that um, it, it's improving not only our, uh, our property, but also motivating the adjacent property owners to make improvements as well. Uh, once they see it's feasible and that they can get commission approval for uh, the challenges that we have with both the creek setback and the street front is set back. Um, we have only proposed one door. There is no intention to retenant, uh, and we don't have any uh, problems with uh, committing to that. To, to that. And um, we don't have any problems committing to a creek uh, path. If, if that's decided to do in the future, I believe the parking stalls can be slightly uh, moved to, to, to uh, accommodate that request. Uh, I thank everyone for their time uh, this evening. I know it's getting late. I'm going to be brief. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, planning commissioners, for your time. OK, so thank you for that presentation. I believe still have a few more minutes available to you. Uh, does your architect wish to, wish to speak at this time? Yeah, I'll say something. I'm Carl Campos, Loving Campos Architects. I've, been, I've known Ray Adib for 40 years. He's been an icon in this city. He's been uh, 46 years in business. That's an incredible accomplishment to still be in business in our town. He's kind of like a, like a fixture in our city. And so the fact that he still is here and wants to do this minor 3,000 square foot addition to help his business grow is, is amazing. And uh, I'm hoping you'll find some support for someone that's been in business here in our community and contributed to our community for 46 years. The plan is pretty simple. Uh, we can't go into the, uh, the creek setback zone. It's just you can't do that with the, with, the, with the standards of the creek setback. And so that's a structure setback line. So. We're building in the front of the store. The adjacent properties to the north and south are right on the property lines up against the sidewalk. And so um, we're hoping that you'll give us some relief there. And uh, he doesn't he doesn't need the required parking. I know the family uh, intends on continuing their business operations for many years to come. And so uh, we're hoping just to, to get some positive feedback from you to to let a person who's been in business for 46 years continue to be in the city for 46 years and, and uh, see that this is a, a, a valuable and a reasonable uh, you know, request. That's all I have to say. I can ask for some technical questions if you have. We reduced the uh, unit count from five to, to two. It's an ADA issue. We can we can actually uh, provide those units without having to provide an elevator to the second floor. Uh, so that that was a comment we got from back from building. And so I think any kind of housing complement that you can add to the city is valuable uh, from a standpoint. We have a housing crisis here, so providing affordable housing in the in the town downtown 
above the store, it would be a great benefit. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments from the applicant at this time? I just want well, let me let me finish one other comment. The the parking for the for the residential, it's off hours. So the store opens late in the morning, 9 30, 10 o'clock. Most people are gone by then. They park at night there. The store closes at reasonable store hours. And so it's kind of a traditional transitional use where you have uh, residential uh, vertical mixed use projects where the housing parking component, there, there's going to be 23 stalls available at night there. So we're only going to have two apartments there. And they'll be gone in the morning when the store opens and they'll be returning at night when the store in the evening when the stores close. So the parking ratios are, are uh, in a sense, not really appropriate uh, from the standpoint of the requirements for that. It's it's a uh, it's off hours. OK, thank you. So, again, any other final remarks from the applicant before we move to open? I got a question. Is anybody else here? Cricket in the background? <laughs> yeah, it's my. I'm. It, it's my house. I'm out in my patio. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna get up and start looking for him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm outside. You're up, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <clears throat> I can mute it if you like, Kurt. So you guys can <laughs> just catch them and throw them away. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, Carl. Uh, you should. You should mute. Okay. Thank you. All right, so seeing no other uh, com comment from the applicant, we'll go ahead and move to the open public comment period. Anyone in the public who is attending this Zoom meeting or at home would like to call in and make a public comment, this is your opportunity. Uh, we will turn to the commission secretary and team to see if anyone from the public is interested in commenting as I talk very slowly and ask you this question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I've observed the attendees list. The same two names have been on the list throughout the entirety of this evening's proceedings. I do not see any new names appearing. There are no hands raised, and we have not been prompted that there's anyone joining us by phone who wishes to speak. Uh, my conclusion is there, no, there is no public comment for this item. Okay. so. Traditionally, we would go back to the applicant for any closing remarks or rebuttal. Does the applicant have anything further that they would wish to say? No, thank you, Commissioner. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this item. And given that this is a this item is a pre-application or a pre-application uh, review, um, really, I think the app the action item here is just to receive questions, comments, and, and other feedback from the commissioners to the applicant and staff. Does any of the commissioner want to lead us off? Uh, seeing that everyone wants to jump in all at once. Um, oh, there he is, Commissioner. I'll, I'll keep going here. Um, I think we all just stepped back and you were standing there. Uh, yeah, everyone stepped back and I was the volunteer. Huh? Um, well, I, you know, I think this area has chronically suffered from a parking deficiency and especially at lunchtime. Uh, you got the Hickory Pit, you got George's, you got the coffee shop, you got the Babushka restaurant. Um, Keone Garden, there's a lot of restaurants there. So you get a lot of people coming in. And um, so I think that's, you know, something we need to take into consideration. The applicant needs to address in any application that might come forward to us. Um, the offsite parking agreement is revocable. So I would say that it's irrelevant and should not be taken into account in our consideration. Um, either party can revoke it. Uh, it was pointed out by the applicant that there are some adjustments they could make that would mitigate the loss of those parking stalls but nevertheless um, what exists is not of any benefit to the parking in the long run um, the staff pointed out that there is an issue with the potential of this business not being here um, we certainly 
don't wish to see uh, Adib's Persian rugs go somewhere, but they might move to another location uh, in Walnut Creek. They might be very happy where they are. Um, but regardless of that, the, you know, whatever we do now is, is effectively permanent. And I would hate to live with a bad mistake now, 10 or 15 years from now, when, we, <clears throat> when that change might occur. Um, the traffic study, uh, there's only three sections in the whole traffic study that are public parking. Everything else is private parking associated with specific properties, not this property. And, you know, users of this property, uh, patrons of this property can't use those other places except for the public parking. And I think there's only nine street parking places in the traffic study. If you look at the business hours, shows that those nine places over the business hours is 85% occupied, meaning that really only one space might be available during the course of the business day for this, for patrons of this business to use. So I don't think that helps, you know, the parking situation at all. Um, you know, the ex one exhibit showed the, the impact of the creek on the site, which is, you know, just gobbles up a significant portion of the site. And that's stuff that's evolved. This is an old building. Obviously, things were built here, but as public safety comes into account, the county flood control, uh, hydrological studies have shown that these kind of setbacks are appropriate for public safety. And so the truth is that this site has that limitation to it. And as shown, some of those other sites could not even be redeveloped. So I think this this whole vicinity of Walnut Creek is very, very limited on what might be uh, developed there. Uh, some sites are just not developable. Uh, this one has very limited area that it can develop. And any plan that is proposed, I think, would have to deal with that limited area or you know, incorporating the existing structure, which is what they're trying to do. Um, I think the residential units are any benefit to the housing supply. Uh, two units in that location all by themselves, oddly placed, uh, really aren't a solution to housing. And I think that I think the staff report alluded to it, that perhaps elimination of the residential units uh, would alleviate the parking by four stalls, uh, alleviate the parking requirement by four stalls. So I think that the applicant should uh, consider if they come back with an application, not having any residential accommodate their commercial needs and augment the parking that's been proposed. Um, the, uh, one of the things we would have to find if we were to approve it is clear and convincing evidence uh, with regards to the parking. We certainly don't have that in, in my analysis of the parking report. Um, there was also discussion of the Creek Walk. Um, that was a long time ago, but I, I do think the concept was, I mean, they weren't going to put, put the creek walk down at the bottom of the creek. The idea was to build a, a, walk, a walk area along the top of the bank. Um, and uh, there are areas in Walnut Creek, mostly over by Civic Park, where that has been done. And so the concept would be that the back part of this property would uh, provide for a walkway in accordance with the specific plan. This plan doesn't do it, and the only way that a creek walk could ever be built would be to sacrifice more parking. So bottom line is I think the parking is the, is the critical mass here, as well as the creek setbacks. Um, so I don't see that there's uh, a real way out of the parking problem with the limited area that's developable and the parking conditions that exist in that part of Walnut Creek right now. So that's the uh, limit of my input to the applicant. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Pickett. Uh, moving on to Commissioner Strongman. Uh, I must disagree with my colleague, Mr. Pickett. Um, I think there's sufficient parking. Um, in the future, we'll have reduced parking as, as a society anyhow. So I don't think the parking is a problem. I do like the inclusion of residential because we do have a shortage and having just one or two units is an increase in the process. My only concern is they, 
kind of volunteered to increase the setback by five feet, and I would encourage that to happen. Um, a five additional feet that they proposed. Um, but otherwise, I do like the project. And I don't think the parking issue is a big concern. Thank you. Commissioner Ward. Um, okay, so I, um, I, I'm a real estate attorney in my, my day life. Um, and I really didn't understand this project at all, looking at the plans and, and a lot of what was going on here. I'm very concerned about the residential component. It feels like um, two units stuck in an area that are not really residential and not appropriate for that use. Um, I, there was some, um, I believe Mr. Campos referred to affordable housing and I, if, if they're gonna be affordable housing units, then maybe my interest would be peaked a little more. Um, that wasn't included as part of the concept. So that, that would be something that would probably make it more um, interesting to me. Um, I'm extremely concerned about the number of waivers and exceptions and, and things that need to happen to make um, this very difficult lot um, buildable for what is, in my opinion, not a minor addition, but a significant and rather drastic change to the, both the appearance and the, um, the use of the lot. Um, I, I can't really support something that doesn't respect our setbacks to the extent that this one doesn't. Um, I'm concerned about the creek protection and um, the, the uh, future uses of the creek that the city is trying to, um, to use to make it more naturalized and usable to the residents of Walnut Creek. And this seems to, um, to prohibit that in some way and get in the way of that kind of use. Um, I'm not convinced that people will uh, vacate those uh, residential units for the entire day and um, come back at night. I think that um, you know our current situation is hopefully temporary, but I think the days of everybody leaving and en masse from nine to five and going to an office and coming back are, um, they were already numbered and they're more numbered now. So I don't think that's a good assumption with regard to parking. Um, I do wonder if that much, I, I, I'm not as convinced that the parking is drastically um, deficient. Although I will say that included in the neighboring businesses is my own hair salon where I never get to go anymore. And there's never any parking there at all. It's, it's very insufficient. That entire um, shopping center does not have enough parking for the variety of businesses that are included there. Um, so, while I think that for the current use of the property that we're talking about, the parking is probably sufficient, the parking in the area is not sufficient at all. And um, while I recognize that this is a long-standing and very valued local business, and I would want to do anything we could to support that, I also note that the business has moved like five times for, during the, the time that it's been in Walnut Creek, and that doesn't suggest that this is going to be a permanent location for it. Um, so I'm kind of confused by all these different elements being um, put together and I'm very concerned by the number of exceptions and waivers that are being considered to try and do it. And I don't see the residential component as being a real strength of the project. So um, those are my concerns um, with regard to that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. Commissioner Anderson. You're on mute. Sorry. Um, I was concerned initially about the uh, uh, the, the parking uh, simply because um, you know the the tenant could go away, as has been mentioned. Uh, I'm a little less concerned, having uh, learned a little bit more uh, from the comments by the applicant that. Uh, um, that they are working on their second and third generation. Um, that's that's good. I think Persian carpets are probably not a a, a bad item. They've been around a few thousand years. Probably will go for another few thousand. Um, but as uh, Commissioner Ward pointed out, uh, they have moved. You know, from time to time, not often, but they do. Um, they might well do that again. Um, and one could put in a requirement that, you know, any new tenant would have to have a similar parking uh, requirement um, or need. I think that's hard 
to enforce, especially at some later point where, uh, you know, it's just uh, the way retail situation has evolved or will evolve, that they just, you know, there aren't that, you know, there aren't many of those types of tenants. And, if it, you know, then you wind up with a, something that's empty for a couple of years and then, you know, the city doesn't want to stay empty indefinitely and they start making compromises. So it's, um, I think for the short term and for perhaps a, a middle term with the DID, um, it may work. I'm not sure that, um, I'm not sure that it, it's a, a good idea for, you know, the life of the building. Um, that the Walnut Creek is going to be uh, having that here. Um, so that's a concern. Um, whether that can be addressed is hard to know. Uh, as far as the, the front setback, um, if, you, if you look, you know, down that uh, down South Main Street from that from Newell South, and this is really the only building that has a significant setback. Um, uh, so I'm not not as concerned given the uh, uh, the neighborhood, uh, but I think that uh, a modest setback from what they propose would be uh, would be useful. Um, I'm not sure whether I see the residential units as um, uh, sort of a unique opportunity to uh, live in a more um, active commercial area, um, or just a couple of units that are sort of lost and out of place. Um, haven't figured that one out. So I just can't wait to much much advice on that. Uh, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, who's next? Commissioner Kurselik? Any comments? Thank you, Chair. Um, considering the site and all the restrictions and everything, it seems to be a, a fairly nice project. Um, I would like to see the um, applicant work a little more with design review on the set set back to come up with something that everybody agrees is is reasonable whether it's another five feet or three feet um, i think there's some room to work there um, if and when it comes back to us i'd like to have a better understanding of the housing and why it's felt appropriate as part of this development um, i'm not opposed to it i'm not sure i see the need for it <clears throat> since it's only two units um, so I'd like, like a little more information if it does proceed along that, that path. Um, and then as far as the parking, um, the whole area has, it's pretty tight with parking. I believe this project is adding a couple more spaces. Um, in the future, somebody else may move in, but if it's somebody who feels they need a lot of parking, they may not, they may decide not to move into this spot. So, um, you know, that's just how things tend to work themselves out over time. So I don't have too many concerns. I went through the traffic or the parking study and um, I don't have any real major heartburn with the number of spaces. If the parking agreement were to go away, it that would create a problem in my opinion for both property owners. Uh, this property owner could simply restripe and they, they may lose one spot, but then the adjacent property owner is gonna have an access issue. So I think it does more harm to them than it does to this applicant. So those are my basic comments. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Krasilek. How about Commissioner Reiser? Thank you, Chair Lezak. Um, I would just be parroting what, what uh, Commissioner Pickett and Ward had said a bit earlier in terms of concerns about it. If and when it, if it comes back, I think it's going to look something different than it does today. I just think there's too many waivers that are being asked for in this particular case. And my main concern is just I, from a longevity standpoint, I think Melissa brought it up or someone brought it up, Ken, perhaps, um, in terms of uh, they've been in five other locations in Walnut Creek since their, since their inception. And who's to say they're going to stay here? Just just putting, approving it based on a particular use has lasting effects. And I'm not sure that we were in a position or should be in a position to approve it as is. So I'm showing concerns with it as it sits today. 
Okay, thank you. So last up, um, let's see, residential use. Uh, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable that this could be a mixed use location. And I'm well aware that, you know, the residential use likely pays the rent to support, you know, site improvement and building costs. So I, I do understand why the applicant would want as much residential as they could get here. And I'm, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, when we talk about the driveway aggregation issue, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably fine that with the driveway aggregation as it is and don't feel like we need to push that any further. Um, the front setback exception, uh, I'm fairly comfortable with because of the way the adjacent properties along that street frontage already have some, uh, some encroachment into that area. I also think that from my perspective, the way that that street in, in a nearly downtown location feels, it could support uh, building frontage much closer to the street. I'm not hung up on the exact frontage exemption, uh, but I do note that when you don't have setback and you don't have uh, a loading zone or any other use in the front, what you need is you're gonna need some space in the back for that purpose. Um, I did note that one of the stalls that's shown in various exhibits in the plans it's hard to know because the not parking stall number changes in every exhibit um, but there's a sideways parking stall that's shown in the last page of the plans as sort of being a van loading zone um, but i noticed that there's no trash enclosure or no nothing there to help us understand how trash will be picked up there's an enclosure on what looks like the uh, adjacent property but it's not clear how that's handled. And so if you're gonna, probably the existing use doesn't have a ton of trash issues, but if you're gonna add residential, that's an additional mixed application of, of trash that needs to be determined. There needs to be some trash plan if you don't have a separate enclosure. You're probably gonna need a trash room in the building. Either way, between the loading and the trash access, you probably lose that one parking stall in the back. Um, so that, you know, kind of gets me to other side issues like landscaping. There's very little landscaping in this location whatsoever. If you're doing this kind of earth disturbance, this kind of an application, I would assume that you're gonna trigger some kind of a C3 or other hydraulic issues that's gonna need to be determined. I don't see any analysis of how that's gonna be, how that's gonna be handled and what's everything else is essentially parking spaces. So then we get to the, the creek setback issue. I, I would like to see the vision of the, the specific plan honored and have a way to set that up if it ever would happen in the future. And so that aligns me, the biggest you know, problem with that potentially is really at this point, just the parking spaces, which leads us back to parking, which is really the gorilla in the room here. Um, I do agree with Commissioner Pickett in a number of ways here, and that is that the offsite parking agreement, as much as it benefits everyone to keep that agreement in, around, it does not count as an offsite parking agreement unless the city is party to it, which it's not currently. Um, it would need to be that way, and it would need to be uh, something that, that could not be removed from the property. Um, that would require a completely new negotiated agreement um, so that's something that the applicant needs to be aware of if they choose to use any kind of offsite parking agreement. Um, then in addition to that, we start to get into the parking numbers, the parking study versus the code. And this is where we get tripped up. And so what I see happening here is the study is interesting. The study probably supports the very few people from a retail perspective visit this property at any given time. And if they we're never going to move and it would be this forever until the building will fall down, then I think that, you know, we might be able to rely on that study. But since we can't, that study is really interesting, but not applicable from my perspective. So where this, we really get hung up is what kind of park production, what kind of parking exceptions could be we, we be willing to grant. And if we were willing to grant them the code only allows us to grant a certain percentage, which I think here says 20%. So the current plan as it's shown, especially if it loses a couple spaces to a loading zone and other setback issues, 
is already several spaces short of being able to meet the maximum exception. And so even if we could find the clear, they could find those extra spaces and then we could grant the maximum exception. And I might be open to that, but the problem then is that there's a finding that we have to make that says that, <clears throat> that this is sufficient for this building moving forward to the future and not just this current tenant. I don't believe there's any way we could make that finding given the information that we have before us. Um, and so that, to me, that's almost a deal killer that the only other way around it might be some kind of an additional like conditional use permit that went with the entitlements, which would mean that if Adib's ever moved out and the, the retail use changed in any way that their retail occupancy would, would be removed. And I think we kind of, Commissioner Anderson kind of touched on that that's probably not something that the city would want to deal with. It's not really very realistic. Um, so it puts us in a very difficult, it puts the applicant in a very difficult situation where frankly, I like the project and I understand what they're trying to do, but with the parking as it sits right now, I don't think that I could make the findings that would make it possible to support it. So with that, does any other commissioner want to have any other remarks that they've come to to give additional feedback to the, to the applicant? Okay, seeing none, Commission Secretary, I will turn back to you to just find out, is that all the information that you need to feel comfortable that the applicant has the feedback that they need to, to close this hearing item at this time? Um, I would defer to Alan, but I think we've gotten a number of uh, comments from the commission relative to how you feel about the project, your concerns relative to parking, among other concerns. And um, I would just ask Alan if there's anything he needs clarity on based on the uh, survey of comments we have. Uh, no, I believe the uh, comments were sufficient and succinct. And uh, we'll, we'll have a discussion with the applicant to, and uh, go on from there and see where we are. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll go ahead and close the public hearings. And now we'll move forward to commission considerations. Uh, commission Secretary, I don't see any items on the commission considerations section of the agenda. Are there any commission considerations this evening? No, Mr. Chair, there are none. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda, which is commission member and staff reports or announcements. Uh, I don't see any listed on the agenda. Commission Secretary, are there any commission member staff report announcements or do any of the other commissioners have any uh, staff reports or announcements? Uh, staff has none to offer. I would defer to any commissioner who may have something to report. Okay, so seeing none, I wanna thank everyone for attending this evening's uh, May 28th Planning Commission meeting and we'll call it adjournment at 9.30 p.m. Thank you. Good night.